Hey everyone, it's Nathan with Dividend Growth Machine. Today we're going to be doing a Gordon Constant Growth Model example in our first part of the series, How to Value a Company Stock. The basic idea of the Gordon Constant Growth Model is that we have a firm, and this firm pays dividends. Let's say they pay $1 per share. And we expect this firm is going to continue to pay dividends on through infinity. So $1, $1, $1, $1, so on and so forth every year for the rest of time. So we want to know how much is this company worth to us? How much should we pay for this today? And the answer to that is, of course, we have to discount each one of these cash flows to come up with a present value. So we cannot simply just add up all the future dividends that we're going to receive. Otherwise, we would make a 0% rate of return on our investment. So each one of these cash flows in the future is worth less and less to us the further we go out. So this $1, if we discount it at, say, 10%, we're only willing to pay 90 cents for this cash flow. The cash flow in year number two, the $1, is only going to be worth about 81 cents to us today. So each one of these cash flows is going to be worth a smaller and smaller number. So essentially we're just going to add up all the present values of the future dividends and that's going to come up with our expected stock value. What we're also going to do in this situation is assume we have some kind of dividend growth. So rather than just say we've got $1, $1, $1, we can grow this at some amount per year. So if we grow it at say 10%, we can say this year number one is a dollar, year number two is a dollar and, I'm sorry, ten cents, etc., etc., on out into infinity. And then, of course, each of these would be discounted back at our discount rate. So here is the formula we've got the price of the stock or the estimated price that we're going to pay for it. We have the dividend, which you'll notice is D1, which signifies it's next year's dividend. We have R, which stands for your required rate of return. And then we have G, which is the perpetual growth rate of these dividends. So let's put this formula into action and we'll evaluate the stock of Coca-Cola. So here we have the price of Coca-Cola, which is what we're trying to find. It's a question mark. We don't know this yet. The dividend, if you look it up online, is $1.64 per year. So we're going to use that. The rate of return is going to be 7%. This is whatever percentage you desire to make on this investment. So if it's a riskier company or you think there's more risk with the dividend growth than you uh, feel comfortable with, you can increase this re excuse me, required rate of return, which will lower the estimated value of the stock. The G simply represents what we think the growth of the dividend is going to be for the rest of time. So I've got here 3%, which assumes Coca-Cola can continue raising their dividend about what they've done the last three years. So if we plug all of these into the Gordon Constant Growth Model formula, we come up with $1.64, which is D1, 7% is the growth rate, so 0.07 is how you punch that into your calculator, and then the constant growth rate of 3% for the dividend, uh, 1.64 divided by this. 0.04 when you subtract this out, 164 divided by 0.04 equals $41. So this is what we would estimate Coca-Cola's stock price is worth today if we are going to want to make 7% on this investment and assuming Coke can continue to grow their dividend by 3% per year for the rest of time, we would be willing to pay $41 per share for this 
stock. So if we look up what Coca-Cola stock is trading at today, and let's say right now it's at, I believe, around $46. So we would look at 46 and we would say, no, that's a little bit over value. That's more than what I'm willing to pay for it. So you would want to wait until Coca-Cola traded for $41 or less before you'd be willing to make an investment. So the let's talk real quick about the pros and cons of this formula. One of the obvious pros is that this is a very easy way to value a stock. Um, it's also really good for stable dividend growers like Coca-Cola and Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, companies like that that have a steady payout and they've grown their dividend consistently through time. The cons, however, are that, well, first of all, this does not work if the company does not pay a dividend. So if you have company like Twitter or Amazon, you're not going to be able to value it with this formula. But it's also extremely sensitive to inputs. So if you play around with the formula a little bit, and I would encourage you to do that, the inputs like required rate of return, by just increasing that by 1% or even a half a percent can make a drastic difference in the number that you come up with. Um, and it's also a bit unrealistic to assume that a company can even pay a dividend indefinitely. The average company will go bankrupt within 25 years. So, you know, the companies that you're looking at, be sure that before you use this formula, you believe that they have a competitive advantage, that they can continue to even exist indefinitely. If not, then obviously this formula really starts to fall apart if the company pays a dividend for 10 years and then they cut it thereafter, they're worth dramatically less than what you would calculate with a Gordon growth model. Um, and also be careful here that your growth estimates are not too large. Um, if we would assume that Coke can grow their dividend at say 10% per year, that's just not realistic. You know, no company can grow indefinitely at a faster rate of growth than the underlying economy that they're in or the industry that they're in. So just be careful using too optimistic of assumptions. So that's the Gordon Constant Growth Model. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to get more videos like this, hit the subscribe button at the bottom right of your screen. Post videos a couple times per week. So follow along with me and I'll hope to see you next time.